What's up guys? We're back again. It's 6.30 in the morning on Saturday. We're getting ready for Project Juice Cat. This is going to be a turbocharged B18 Civic by the end of this day. One of the most important things about putting a turbo on your car is to be prepared and planned out. We've got everything organized, all the steps we're going to need to take. Let's go ahead and get started and have some fun. Send it! Okay guys, planning is everything. I got my parts laid out on the table. Everything we're going to need today. Alright guys, one of the first things we're going to do is remove the exhaust and the hood off the car. Then we're going to set our base timing with the timing light identify what our static fuel pressure is before we even take anything apart and then we're going to go ahead and start having some fun. Let's get to it. Okay guys, before we even get started we need to set the base ignition timing for the engine. After we set the base timing and we put the turbocharger on the vehicle, the software is going to be taking over from that point, such as retarding the ignition back when we get into boost. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to set your ignition timing. You want to break these bolts loose on the distributor so that we can turn it and adjust our timing. Okay guys, once we get the vehicle to operating temperature, before we start adjusting the timing, we need to find the service connector. There's a two pin and a three pin connector. We're after the two pin. We need to jump this with a jumper wire to set our base timing. This okay guys, we've got the service connector jumped. We need to do this before we start adjusting our timing. This is going to eliminate the computer controlling the advance, allowing us to set the base ignition timing correctly. Okay guys, here's the crankshaft pulley. What I've done is put a white mark on the timing mark. It's kind of hard to see, but there's three marks, three ticks. The one in the middle that I've covered in white is 16 degrees before top dead center, and that's our target. This first tick is zero degrees. It's a reference for you. So I'm gonna show you where the pointer is on the timing cover, and every time that strobe light flashes, we need to adjust the distributor until that white Here's our timing light. Consists of a ground and a power from the battery. And then we need to get a signal from the number one spark plug. Once we hook it up, this is gonna turn on and show us all the information we need. Number one spark plug. All right, we're reading our RPMs. I don't know if you can see that, guys. 800, 790, that's right in our spec. Okay, next what we're gonna do is look at the crankshaft. We're gonna be aiming this light, and it's going to flash. What this is doing is it's going to create a strobe light effect on the crankshaft so that we can see where the timing marks are every time it passes. It's pretty neat. Let me see if I can show you guys. Kind of hard to see. But we are just barely off by maybe a degree or two. See our pointer right there? It's kind of hard to see 
speed, but I'm going to set it correctly. Next step, guys. Alright guys, we have relocated the battery to the trunk and installed the new breather box in place of where the battery goes. We're going to be having lines coming from here to the valve cover and lines from here going down to the back of the block. We're going to have some nice pod filters going here as well. And you can see here we tied in our battery cables from the starter and the fuse box. We did a nice job running it. Through the firewall, through the factory grommet. And attached it so it wouldn't rub around and move. We've got conduit around it as well. to our battery. I grounded right here, sanded down to bare metal. Everything's coming together. On to the next step. Alright guys, we just got the turbo manifold bolted up and torqued down. We've got new exhaust manifold gasket in between the cylinder head and the new manifold. Loctite in the studs. We are ready to put the turbo on. Okay guys, I've put on the turbo manifold and mounted the turbo. We're checking for clearance. And we are making our plans to run the oil feed line as well as the oil return line back down to the oil pan. So I'm going to take some measurements and keep working. Okay guys, I'm removing the hex plugs from the block. There's one here and another one here. We're going to remove these and put in AN fittings. These are actually breather ports for the crankcase. So if we remove these plugs and add some fittings, we're gonna run hoses from it and that should help expel all the extra crank case pressure the turbo is going to cause. This is gonna reduce oil consumption and other issues. Let's go ahead and remove this one. It's just a plug. goes to the block we're gonna add our fittings all right guys got both of the AN fittings in for the breather box torqued down ready to go next I've already removed the oil pressure switch that's where we're gonna TN to get our oil pressure for the turbo let's start that next all right guys we got our oil <coughs> pressure splitter in here so what we're gonna do is take oil pressure from the engine and feed it up to our turbo this is where our oil pressure gauge is gonna hook up to all right let's move on to the next step all right we've got the oil feed line installed on the top of that T and the oil pressure gauge line on the back side of it looking good all right, we pre-filled the oil filter, screwed it on. We've got our braided lines and AN fittings hooked up to our breather ports. We are moving right along, guys, ready to rock. Okay, guys, we got the turbo on and the downpipe. Ran the oil feed line. Got our inline filter. Everything's looking good so far, guys. Fitment's pretty close. Really close. She's gonna be loud. All right guys, we got our oil return fitting 
installed in the oil pan. Drilled a hole and we've put the gaskets and the nut on both sides. Ready to go. Okay guys, we've removed the oil control valve here for the oil pump. This is gonna regulate the pressure the oil pump makes. What I've done is I've added a shim to this plug. What that's gonna do is increase the spring rate of this spring and give us more oil pressure at idle. Let's go ahead and put it back together. All right guys, we got our oil return line ran from the bottom of the turbo into the oil pan. Everything's looking good. Let's move on to the next step. All right guys, we just put on the three bar map sensor. This is gonna enable us to read a higher level of boost than the factory sensor. Obviously the factory engine did not come with the turbo, but it would read up to about nine to 10 PSI. We're gonna be shooting for 10. So in order to have an accurate reading, we're gonna replace that one and we're done. All right guys, we are now working on the injectors. I've already put on new O-rings on our new injectors, as well as the top hat adapters to fit the fuel rail. I've also got new seals for the intake, and we're getting ready to put them on. All right, guys, we got the Kemso 340 liter per hour fuel pump installed. New fuel strainer, filter out debris. Wired up, ready to drop in. All right guys, we've got some of the intercooler piping on. Right now I'm mocking up the intercooler. We're gonna mount the intercooler and then continue on the rest of the cold side plumbing to the turbo. Moving right along. All right, we've got our intercooler piping complete. Starting at the throttle body coming out we need to install our blow-off valve it makes a sharp turn down and out to the front to the intercooler and where it all begins Oops. all right we've got the wastegate installed got the dump pipe attached. We've got a 10 pound spring inside. Everything's sealed up, ready for the first test drive. 